People seem to like to talk about sex. They do. Oddly enough. <laughs> so your background is in, is in film and writing, is that correct? Yeah, that is. Yeah, I started off um, working in production. I went to UCLA uh, and uh, got a bachelor's in English and creative writing. So, uh, yeah, I went in, I was in film production for seven years. And, you know, this it was really time for me to just stop doing that. It just, you know, those are grueling hours. And, as, you know, as much fun as it is, anyone that's been in film production knows that you really spend most of the time just sitting around and waiting. There's a lot of, like, setup and then wait, wait, wait. So it's not, it's not a lot of glamorous work. And uh, I really like to write. I, you know, I like the, the art of conversation. I like being able to communicate with people, and I like being a smart ass. So, you know, be able to do that in some capacity where, you know, people like it was, you know, kind of a great mix for me. Was it a natural transition to writing about sex and relationships? You know, it was a really weird thing. I was living in New York. I had been engaged. I got disengaged, and then I moved back to, to L.A., and I had a friend of mine that was working for this kind of dating guru mm -hmm. and said, you know, why don't you come and write, write, write for him? And so I went, and we were, we were just writing dating content mostly, mm -hmm. and it was stuff like, you know, how to talk to guys at a bar or great places to go for singles and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he said, you know, well, let's spice it up a little bit. Why don't you write an article on that's sex-based? And I said, okay, you know, I've, I've heard of sex. Maybe I can write something like that. And so I wrote an article on, like, how to give a blowjob. And surprise, that was like, you know, people like to read about that. People like to read about doing that. Yes. Yeah, you know, shockingly, right? <laughs> so I think uh, a friend of mine actually just told me that if you type in how to give a blowjob, my article is the first one that comes up on Google. So you must be very popular in that sense. <laughs> I was like, wow, I've made my mark on society. If you absolutely need to do something, contact Laura. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. that seems about right. I, well. I haven't had that luck on Google yet. <laughs> Well, you, well, maybe you can outdo me, and you could be the king of blowjobs. Mine won't be as good. <laughs> I just know it. Yes, your time will come. Dream big, Adam. Dream big. So the question is, there, there seem to be a lot of reality shows that are dating-based. Yeah. Some are millionaire matchmakers. Some are just, hey, put these losers together. They're funny, but <laughs> do, you, do you often scoff at them and say, like, what are these people doing? I, I really don't see how people like that are going to work. I mean, you put them together for, what, maybe five minutes or like, or in some fantasy-based date, and that's all fine and good for for TV, but, I mean, you know, there's real world, and things actually happen, and people have to really communicate with each other, and I don't see that actually working in any, you know, capacity. I think if it does, and that then they're absolutely the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's real life that happens and people have to, you know, deal with everybody's farts and, you know, real life and taxes and, you know, just having to deal with some people on a day-to-day -day basis. And they don't show any of that in these shows. And I just look at them and I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, nice TV, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. so Obviously, I'm a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Does your radio show give you give you material for your blog or is it vice versa or separate it's definitely both you know i write uh, a sex column and i have people that write into me with questions and then i also have listeners that will send me questions you know to my website as well and so when you know, when i first started writing this column i i kind of felt like i was just writing to the you know to the, a black hole someplace like I don't know if anyone's reading this but I'm just going to talk about sex and then I started getting like these really genuine questions where people were were you know in in pain like they had you know, genuine like I don't know what to do about this or I I have no place else to turn you know I feel stupid I'd be asking somebody can you help me with this and I have no problem talking about it I don't have any judgment about it so for me it was like yeah, let's talk about it. There's, you know, it's it's not embarrassing. It's just sex. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So to be able to look at it in a context where it's like it's supposed to be fun, you know, don't have to be embarrassed. You know, there's plenty of people that have gone through the same thing. You know, it's a totally normal situation. It takes, like, the shame away from it, and people can relax and just go, oh, okay, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to be able to talk about it on the radio is even much more fun because – you know, I get like a panel, like I call them like my panel of pervs, you know, and we come in and we can talk about it and everyone else has to, you know, bring their own experience to it as well. So you have that sense of, 
you know, I'm not alone. You know, other people have gone through this and, you know, you think yours is bad. Let me tell you my story. So <laughs> is there, always... <laughs> are there like the craziest problems you've heard or are there just common problems that come up time and time again, making them common problems? But... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do. I get a lot of the common problems. Um, you know, really the, the, the main thread that goes through is always um, people are afraid to communicate. They can't ask for what they want and what they need or, you know, I'm not getting what I what I want or I'm not sure what it is, but I'm way too embarrassed or too ashamed to ask for it or to discuss it. And I think that that's the hardest thing for people. It's like, well, I don't want to say anything about it. Oh, I can't. I don't want. I, I can't talk about it. It's too, like, I would never ask for that or, I don't, you know, so yeah. that's the biggest problem for people. And then, yeah, I, I get like some of the. I get some interesting things too. It's like I had a, I had some guy that that uh, emailed me and said, you know, I'm really into crushing. You know, how do I get a girl to to uh, be into crushing with me? And I was like, I don't know what crushing is. You know, so I had to go look it up on the web as I do. And I was like, oh, I see. It's a guy that likes to watch women crush bugs with her feet. All right, that's specific. You know what I mean? And that's, again, that's the glory <laughs> of uh, the world we live in today because there are sites for mm-hmm. crushing and there's, you know, a you know mistress crusher and she crushes bugs and, you know what I mean? So there's something for everybody. But, yeah, I, I love the ones where I'm like, huh, I'm going to research that one. And I get to meet, like, all <laughs> kinds of amazing people. I thought that was going to have to do with stepping on your testicles, but... Uh, no, but there's that too. There's a lot of people that go into like the pain vein, shall we say? The pain, yes. More, there's a movie out about the advent of internet porn and how easy it is to get. Does that? Do you hear oh, a lot it about Middleman? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I want to see that. Does that affect? Is that sort of a, a new theme that comes up? Say, oh, I can look at porn and and my partner doesn't like that, or? Yeah, I just did a show actually about porn addiction and how it's become like an amazing epidemic and how it's really destroyed uh, the sex lives of so many couples. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like there was a guy that was talking about how he used to have like a really great sex life with his wife and now he said, you know, he's coming home now. It's like he's, you know, like men are having affairs with their porn, which makes sense because, you know, you, you, you know, you climax you release these endorphins in your body and it, it's like, you know, this pleasure that goes off in your head. So you keep having this pleasure and having this pleasure. It's like your brain is telling you that, you know, it's like you're dating this porn. So more and more guys are having, you know, that are becoming like addicted to it. It's like their, their pleasure and their, it's like almost like an emotional attachment to this porn now. And it's really taking away from a, a sense of reality to, you know, these relationships that they're in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, more women are saying that they're, they're feeling like they have to do battle with, you know, porn. Either they become like these porn actresses in their bedrooms, mm-hmm. you know, where it's not now things like now everything has to be open for, you know, everything has to be game. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, so the, the people's sex lives are completely changing because of what's out there now. I see. Yeah. And, you know, guys, you know, sex drives are kind of, they're definitely changing, too, just mm-hmm. because of them. I looked up porn requirements, and I wouldn't fit the bill, so it wasn't quite worth the... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you, you kind of look, too, and sometimes it's like, the guys that are out there, it's not like they're really, you know, movie star looks all the time. It's because you, you have to have a certain, yeah, like you said, credentials, you know. Yes. You got to be able to perform on cue. You got to be able to, you know, climax on cue. And then you got to be able to do it right back again. So that's a very special talent. And, you know, if you don't really have it in the face department, that's not the really big deal. <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there doesn't seem to be a focus on the face, I've noticed. The show is called Between the Sheets. Yeah, Between the Sheets with Laura Somoza. And you can see that on either NewDissidentRadio.com or you can get it on iTunes. Okay. Yeah. And your book out is by the same title? You know, no, the, my book oh. is Bliss in the Bedroom. All right. And it's an ebook. And if you go to my website, BlissInTheBedroom.com, you can get download a copy of it there. You can read it you know, in five seconds. Or uh, you can also just sign up for my free newsletters. You can ask me any questions there. I'm like the naughty Dear Abby. I'll answer anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. The funny thing was that it was 
85% of women were happy with the size of their uh, partner, right. and it was 55% of the men that were more concerned about the size. Hmm. And me, women were more that were more concerned or were happier with the girth of a man as opposed to length of a man. Okay. So it wasn't so much about the size that mattered as right. the shape that mattered. So it's really the spread we're getting at. Yeah. yeah. And the most most men that thought that, that they had a, a smaller penis were actually did not. More men that are average size think that they're small. So all, all these big penis men just kind of have to just deal with it. Yeah, all the guys, well, all the guys that were above average knew they were above average. But the guys They're like, that were, hell yeah, you know, I am. In the, in, the, in, the, in the average range were like, I'm small, you know what I mean? Like, And then the guys that were small, that were small didn't have the same um, hang-ups about it. It was really kind of an interesting survey. It was a 60-year survey that was just cut out. 60-year? Yeah. Wow, that's 60 a lot of time. years of people going, ah, I wonder if I have a problem with the size of my dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's sort of sad, but I guess it keeps coming up. 